tonight. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's good to get a little little rest afterwards. So uh, we're about to get started. So anyone, that, uh, if anyone in the hallway want to come on in, anyone from the back want to come up forward, and um, I think we're just going to get started and let's prep our hearts and let's set our hearts for worship and uh, encounter living God. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Why don't we just stand to our feet this evening as we get ready to worship? How many people came hungry for the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. We've gathered in one place at one time to seek his face. Are you with me? So we're going to go right in. Is that cool? Awesome. Oh 
Let's lift our voices. 
everything that you have tonight we thank you for an open heaven that is present here tonight we thank you for your glory we thank you for your presence we thank you for your anointing we thank you for the man of God that you have sent here tonight we thank you in advance for what you're going to do we want to show you our appreciation tonight Jesus we are grateful for you you are our devotion. You are our pleasure. You are our daily bread. You are our cold drink of water when we need it. You are that, that rushing wind, oh God. You are the fire in our bones. You are the passion in our hearts. You are the desire of nations. We are hungry for you. Would you just lift your voices all over this place and express your hunger and desire for him right now? He's a person. Holy Spirit is a person. He wants to come in and fill you tonight. He wants to come in and refresh you tonight. He wants to come in and touch your life tonight. Oh, we welcome you, Lord. Come on, lift your voices. Singing in English, singing in the Spirit in other tongues, speaking in tongues. Release your heavenly language, worship team. Release your heavenly language. Hallelujah. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand, and I'm melting your peace, it's overwhelming, I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heartbeat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand, and I'm melting your peace, it's overwhelming. And just to be close to you, just to be close to you. Just to be close to you 
is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. And as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. As the deer panteth for, sing it with all your heart. This is for you, Jesus. We roll out the red carpet for you tonight. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee, You alone. And You alone are my strength, my shield, to You my spirit lead. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you and I long to worship you, yes we do, O oh Lord, and I long to worship you, and I long to worship you. Come on, let's go higher. Let's go higher. There's a door opening for us tonight. There's a door opening for you tonight. There's a way prepared for you tonight. The mountains are being brought low. The valleys are being raised up. A way is being made in the wilderness for you tonight.
wonderful you are. You are wonderful you are. He la no 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 sinde. He la no no hungry we are hungry Lord we are thirsty oh Lord we are hungry Lord for a mighty move of God just lift your hands to him. There's an old revival song that's in my spirit tonight. Lord, we're hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, we're thirsty. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I long to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. We're hungry for a move of God. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I long to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. Do you know it, Sean? Yeah, I do know it. Are you serious? Nobody knows this song. I go back. You go way back. Can you sing it with us? Absolutely, yeah. I don't even know if I have the words right, but the anointing is right. <laughs> I, I just want <clears throat> to... Matt, I want you to walk into tonight just like, just overflow, okay? <laughs> Aren't you glad Matt Sorger is here tonight? I am so glad. Test one, two, test, test. Give me the key. Because <clears throat> Lord, I'm hungry. For a mighty move of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I'm thirsty. Matt, you're receiving something Pour tonight, brother. Out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I, I want, want to see the hand of God move mightily inside, inside of me. I'm hungry for a move of God. Lord, I'm hungry. For a mighty move of God. For a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty. Lord, I'm thirsty. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, Lord I, want, I to see want to see the hand of God move mightily God move inside, of inside of me. 
I'm hungry for a move of God. Come on, everything. Lift up the drums. Drums, everything. offering tonight <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah where the spirit of the Lord is there is <laughs> Wait, do you feel the presence of God here tonight wonderful wonderful presence of God I almost forgot what I'm supposed to do right now I want to invite up, uh, actually, you know what we're going to do? Uh, I want to jump right into our testimonials because they're just as anointed as that worship time. Many of you know of our uh, work in uh, Bulgaria. One of our History Maker graduates, a pastor, in fact, uh, Pastor Encho, true apostle, uh, and a gypsy, a gypsy man. And they call themselves Roma. Or maybe they call themselves gypsy. We call them Roma over in Bulgaria, and Encho, Pastor Encho, was actually on the verge. He had a very progressive church uh, by especially Roma standards in Bulgaria. Uh, he would have had one of the larger churches in, in uh, the country as far as his own people are concerned. And he said to me that he was about to quit the ministry. He was going to leave pastoring because he said, is it just about having services? I, I know how to have a great service. I know how to build a church. And he was ready to leave ministry. And then he took History Makers training and felt like he got totally aligned for the destiny for his life and the direction of the church. A year after taking History Makers training, his church doubled in size. So his church doubled in size, but his, his members began to do things out in the community and real signs of transformation occurred. And what they built was, they established some of our transformation councils there, and they formed what very well could be, maybe, the first real rehabilitation system for gypsy people. And, and what I'm talking about is, you know, many of the gypsy people have, have said to me, uh, we have, have had missionaries come for years holding services, you know, doing things, great things happening, but the culture and the nation itself was not changed. And they would go on having good services. In fact, I've preached in some of the churches there, and many of the congregants will come, get, get a touch from God, but steal somebody's bike to go home. You know, it just didn't translate from within the four walls to their home everyday life. After History Makers, Encho and his team created a system that takes a, 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 a gypsy that has no job, maybe is even homeless, 
gets them free access to showers, training in hygiene, takes them all the way from that up through total reintegration into society and a job. This is huge. He said many of the people now that they're going in and putting through this system and training, because now he's become a history maker's trainer, are now using computers. This may sound like a small thing to you. But he said, he, he told me with tears in his eyes, he said, they're setting up email addresses. We actually teach them the importance of returning an email. And they're literally rehabilitating people. Bruce, do we have that video? Is it ready to go of the influence happening uh, through... Hello, there we go. everyone. My name is Andrew Christoph. I am a pastor in Slovenia, Bulgaria. The name of my church is Antioch. The purpose of this video is to let you know about a project which is initiated from our church. This project consists of five stages. Stage one is feeding poor people, people who are in bad social and economical conditions. We have a leader who is running this stage. Also, we have stage two. In this stage, we have also a leader and his volunteers, and their responsibilities are to teach people about the principles of of the Bible, of how to have successful life. Most of the people are not able to read and write, so we teach them how to do this, so could they would improve in life. We have stage three, which is called hygienic stage. Our purpose is to teach people how to maintain a hygienic and healthful life. We supply for them uh, free baths as we pay their tickets and take them to social baths. We give them towels, shampoos, cut their hair and teach them how to maintain such a lifestyle. In stage four, we have people from our team which we call health and social mediators. Their function is to mediate between the social institutions and the poor people. Most of the poor people don't know how to fill up a blank for a document. Most of them actually don't have even ID cards. So the purpose of these social and health mediators is to help them to communicate with the institutions. In the final fifth stage, we have another leader with his volunteers and their task is to find jobs. Once poor people are put in the workplace and get paid monthly, then they're able to feed not only themselves but their families and now they have a normal lifestyle. The whole purpose of the whole project is to walk the people through all the stages of the whole project as we take them from from level one, which is their poor social and economical stage, and then we escalate them through all these steps, and at the final step, they learn how to live a normal lifestyle. These are all uh, history makers graduates. We're thankful very much for your help and support. It's good that there are people like you who would supply our needs. Thank you. We're thankful to God also. If we really open our hearts and 
turn ourselves to God and cry to God. Just like this little child. If this child is crying, we know that it's hungry. That's why we need to supply the need of the child. The same way, if we turn to God and cry to Him, God is able to supply our needs. We need to pray. We cut the hair of people who are not able to pay about this. But we do it once in a week. The purpose of this is to teach them how to maintain a hygienic lifestyle. I do it for free and the purpose of this is to inform people that there are good people who are good example, that people who are believing in God, they are ready to help others. It is so good that you are helping people with supplying baths, free bathing, and food, and clothes, and teaching us how to live a better life. I'm so much thankful that you're supplying at least once in a week to take bath because we do not have bathrooms in our homes and at least once in a week now we can take baths and it's really good for us. Thank you very much. Now, all of that that you saw there started after they took History Makers, then they did the follow-up program. They formed a transformation council and they said, instead of each individual focusing on separate projects, let's all come together and do one project together as a council. And that was birthed out of that. Can we give Jesus a hand for what he's doing in Bulgaria? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, I want to invite up our next testimonial. I'm just so happy. Did you see that? I mean, could ministry be more enjoyable than this? Jesus knew something when he went to the poor. Jesus knew something when he went. We must return to the secret of ministry. Pastor Bill, isn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. Where is Rohan Stobie? So Pastor Encho, if you're watching this or if you watch it, uh, we applaud you. We, we honor you for the great work you're doing. You and your church, your council there. We from Canada, we love you. We bless you. You can clap for that. <laughs> How come you're not dressed in it? <coughs> Where's the other microphone? Rohan Stobie, we heard from you last year. Uh, if you don't know, uh, he came from a background of, what is it, double attempted murder charges, Actually, then drop, then I, what? Tell us. It, I thought it was double attempted. Uh, I just looked at the, the, uh, the court, the paper the other day. It was actually one charge, just one charge of attempted murder. But all this time, I guess because of the fact that I had two counts of common assault, 
I figured it had to be two counts of it. So I apologize. Okay, so it's one count of attempted murder. That was that was withdrawn and replaced with. Two okay, good. We got that straightened out. Yes. Yeah. But it was still 30 years to life imprisonment. That's what I was facing. Facing 30 years to life imprisonment. You know what he said to me uh, when he connected with history makers? He said, I want to be a licensed trainer. I want to go uh, to the U.S. And, and do some things, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to uh, allow to cross the border. And the government granted you a pardon. A full pardon. Yeah. Yes. So this is kind of a re uh, like a where are you at now kind of thing. Okay, so what's happened? To share with you where I'm at now, I did bring the prison jumpsuit, and uh, when I get an opportunity to minister at a church, I normally wear this as part of my presentation because I want to show people that before I was actually incarcerated. I incarcerated myself virtually because of the experiences that I've been through in my lifetime, right? I gave myself a life sentence. And so without physically being incarcerated, I was already in prison, right? Because of all the defeated thoughts that I was thinking and having and stuff, right? I was already in a virtual prison. And so when I do my presentation in a church and I share my testimony, I wear this to have a very vivid audio-visual illustration. And I'm just completely blown away when, after I finish sharing, the people that are up at the altar, that it's almost like See, God but they, is they don't me. even know you started preaching. <laughs> you started, you created a presentation since you last heard, and now you're actually getting speaking engagements. I am. And, and what's been happening? People have been coming to the altar? What's been going on? Oh, Pastor, uh, as a matter of fact, if you can cue some of the pictures uh, from when uh, Bruce invited me to, uh, to, to speak in the park, I had an opportunity. This is a lady who, after I finished sharing my testimony, she, it's like she beelined me, and uh, she just started crying and sharing you know, what she had been through in her life, and I just listened, and I had an opportunity to, you know, just to minister and, and pray with her, and this happens all the time. When I get an opportunity to minister, it's like people are going through stuff. They're holding on to hurt, they're holding on to pain, they're holding on to anger, and a whole lot of things in between, and they're just looking for somebody just to share so they know it's okay to release the hurt, the pain, the anger, the suffering, and so without, without knowing what God was doing. And I have to tell you, when God said that he wanted for me to share my testimony, I'm like, really? I, you want for me to stand up on the stage and talk to people about the fact that, you know, I was charged with, you know, attempted murder and, you know, and I went through all these negative experiences. You want for me to do that? Really? <laughs> I said, I don't know, Lord. I don't know. <laughs> and here, here I am. At Rowhead. I, they don't even know you became an ordained minister since last year. Yeah, as a matter of fact. Uh, Hello. Uh, uh, I call him Rev, Rev Rohan. As a matter of fact, um, there's a dear friend of mine that, that's here this evening. He's sitting in the audience, and he's actually the one that designed this for my presentation, and he's the one that mentored me and helped me to become an ordained minister. Frank, could you just stand up and just wave to the people, please? Now, you also started Axe. What is Axe? You got involved in business. Your life just took off it since did. HMT. It, it, it did. You it's started like, Axe. What is Axe? So, so when I took History Makers, I went into the training wearing this. When I came out of History Makers, I could take this off because I was now freed from my life sentence. That's essentially what happened. History makers equipped me with the tools, uh, with the freedom, with the confidence that I needed to go and do the things that God wanted for me to do. And so we talk about acts. Acts is acknowledging Christ through sports. And if you put the picture up of uh, uh, just the, no, not that, the logo, uh, acknowledging Christ through sports, yep. Uh, Essentially, 
I'm a former track athlete. I went to school in the States in a track and field scholarship, and I love sports. And uh, God had laid in my heart to use sports as a platform to minister and witness to uh, potential up-and-coming athletes and use that as a means to get them into the kingdom. And, uh, and so I'm a national track and field coach. Uh, you see, you've been, you, you, how, many, how many did you send to the Olympics? We sent uh, six athletes to the Olympics last year, okay, of which two of them were on the men's 4x1 relay team that brought home the bronze medal for Canada. <laughs> Hallelujah! The gospel of the kingdom is working in Canada and beyond. So one of the things that God laid in my heart is that he wanted for me to start an initiative to work with churches. And you can put that flyer up now. He wanted for me to start an initiative where we work with churches and, and show churches how they can institute and implement competitive sports, right? Because what happens, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this, Many parents in the summertime or throughout the course of the year, they find competitive sports, they register their child in competitive sports, but it's outside of the body. It's outside of the church. Come on, Kojo. So what happened? Come on, Kojo. What happened if we bring, right, that competitive sports environment into the church? Now what's going to happen is that parents are going to see that church has competitive sports. They can now register their child for basketball, for soccer, for football, or whatever it is. And so uh, I'm working with a church in Ajax. Uh, this is the church that I go to. And we started uh, a drop-in initiative. It's an eight-week program. Ooh. And we have kids that come out every Saturday right I now. I didn't even know you were doing that. Yeah, I don't even know what they're doing anymore. It's, it's, it's hard to even keep up. I've never visited hardly a single program ever. And, and it's just multiplying because it's the kingdom. That's it's right. kingdom DNA. So, so these are some of the pictures of, uh, of the basketball program. And, uh, and in the new year, we're actually going to be hosting a three and three basketball tournament. And after the three and three basketball tournament, we're going to be starting. We're going to start off in, in Durham first, and then we're going to expand across the GTA. We're going to be starting a, a competitive church basketball league where churches will get an opportunity to have teams register, will have a whole yeah, season. Yeah, you need a no swearing rule with the church leagues, though, brother. Right? Unbelievable. So we're starting off with basketball, then baseball, then soccer, then football, and, and eventually our ultimate goal is to have a Christian Olympics. That's our goal. Ultimately. Hallelujah! <laughs> you see... It doesn't matter how small the seed is. It doesn't matter the background of the seed. It doesn't matter the insignificance of the seed. Jesus said that. If it's kingdom DNA implanted and injected into the seed and the word becomes flesh, it can grow into a tree that expands its branches and influence without limitation. My wife saw such a drastic change in me after taking History Makers is that you know, she was completely just blown away. And as a result, she had to meet this Pastor Derek and, you know, and to find out more about this history makers because she needed to know what the, what did you do with my husband? <laughs> that's, that's essentially, that, that's what. Uh, but, but Pastor Derek is just a seed. Pastor Derek is just another seed. That somebody, somebody took the time to push the kingdom of God in, into me. Amen. And Jesus gave me a chance. And he'd give you a chance to work for his kingdom. Amen. To change the world around you. Amen. And, and Pastor Derek, I know that you have many people uh, that have uh, expressed their appreciation. Hold the mic closer. But I want to tell you that I love you so much and I thank God for you. You are my spiritual father. Shut up. You have blessed me beyond 
anything that I could ever imagine in my lifetime. And I'm so grateful to know you as my spiritual father, as my friend and my brother. So and I'm so grateful to be a part of this whole thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Wait, they want to take a picture of us hugging. It's easy when it's the kingdom. I think we have something for you, Rohan. Go ahead, Pastor Aisha. Okay, so Rohan, for your significant growth, your contribution not only to the kingdom of God, but specifically the History Maker Society, we want to recognize you for the value that you bring to our team, for all of your zeal and excitement for the kingdom of God, and for the amazing work that you're doing. Congratulations. All right, Joe, we got to, we got, thank you. <laughs> I would just give you the mic, but there's other things to do. Joe, what happened to you? You went to Bulgaria. Suddenly you wrote a book. Get up here. Tell, tell the world what happened to you. Let's throw this in there. We've got pre-orders tonight. We've got pre-orders. Pre-orders. This is, this is not on. <laughs> this is on. This is what kingdom is all about. And this is what I was saying last night to those that were here and those that are watching. Uh, and I read from Proverbs 18, your seed is making a way. And because your seed is making a way, suddenly his seed is making a way, your seed is making a way, and it's being multiplied. And this is what kingdom is all about. And I am so thankful when... Our paths cross, Derek. This is, we, you haven't seen anything. Get ready to see the wildfires take place because this world is about to be ignited in a way and you shall see history makers from every corner of the world. Seriously. Seriously. So uh, we, we invited Derek to come to the river a few months ago. I think it was beginning of, uh, of uh, uh, the year, sometime like that. I don't know, springtime. And uh, then shortly after that, uh, I was going to be in Bulgaria. I had, I was, I, I've been going to Bulgaria at least twice a year to do missions. And um, really, I would go to Pastor Encho's um, uh, city, and I didn't even know him. And then um, one time I was in Bulgaria, and you were there. You were in the capital as well, and we didn't even we didn't know each other then. We had an online relationship, and uh, that was our relationship was an online one through social media. And then um, when um, when uh, we, we we hosted the, the history makers here at the river, um, you told me I want you to come uh, and uh, extend your stay in Bulgaria and come and teach with me uh, the history makers in uh, um, in Bulgaria. And I'm like, yeah, do it. I mean, I'm all for a challenge. And if my, uh, my hashtag, Bill and I, we have a hashtag. If it's not fun, we don't want it. It's got to be fun. So our hashtag is, if it's not fun, we don't want it. Yeah. So I'm in Bulgaria. Listen, I had... We had, um, Doug Addison came here several times. We hosted the, uh, uh, the Elijah List uh, Conference, Canadian Elijah List Conference, a couple of years ago. He prophesied, and several others had prophesied over my life, books and all these things. And, um, you know, it's one of those things, you get those prophetic words, and you talk, think about it, and you pray about it, put it on the shelf. You're like, someday, somehow, God is. And I always said, I'm not a writer, I mean, give me a mic, uh, give me some fun, give me food, give me a cappuccino and espresso, and I'll be fine. <laughs> but I don't write. Now I'm teaching the History Makers Academy uh, in Bulgaria, and suddenly the Lord hits me over the head. Gaboom. And he says, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm teaching History Makers, and these guys are going to, you know, you know, change the Bulgaria and the world. And he says, and what have you done with what the dreams and destinies of your life and I'm like well that must be for somebody else because in from that moment on something switched in me you know something really switched in me when I was teaching 
the, the History Makers Academy. I came home and I started writing my first book. Is actually, there's been a problem in the delay of the shipment. It was supposed to be here a few days ago. We're taking pre-orders tonight and this weekend. And it'll be here in a couple of days. So we're taking pre-orders tonight. Yeah, it's called Igniting Your Day, 30-Day Declaration over your days and um, in igniting the power of God in your life. And uh, we just published this. The cover of that book is one of my paintings that I actually painted. And um, yeah, and that came out of this, this history makers thing. Not only a prophetic word, not only a dream, not only a desire. I'm actually on my eighth chapter. Like I've written eight chapters already of my second book. Somebody, what is going on? Eight chapters, and it's called Hallelujah. It's, it's called Catapulted, and uh, I've got another eight to go because I'm like, I'm flying from Winnipeg to Hamilton a few days ago, and I'm like, shut down the TV, shut down the stuff, and I'm like on my laptop. I've got this bug. It's nonstop. So this thing really works, and and Derek, we're so excited of uh, of your yes, your yes is igniting in us the yes, God. We can do this. We've been destined for this. We've been called for this. And I know you're going to talk about that, but we're hosting another one with you coming up in January. Uh, uh, right here. Right you here. can register tonight for yeah. it, actually. Listen, you know, if, if, if you've never been to one, you need to come. I am determined. I've said this whatever I go, whatever I travel. I've said it from this pulpit. I've said it in many cities, many countries that I go to. I said every Christian in the world needs, must take history makers. You know, you go from a dream, you go from a prophetic word to actually, you know, getting tools and igniting and putting things into practice and actually laying down the plan to actually get things done and for you to step into your calling, your destiny. So we're so, uh, uh, we're, I don't have words to express. You have great words to express. And it's so awesome to be able to open this house to host this conference this weekend. Are we blessed by that team? That because this is what the kingdom is all about. I mean, I'm all for good conferences. I'm all for good services. I mean, I even have tattooed on my arm the presence, pursue as a presence. And, I mean, I'm a guy of the presence. But we've got to go beyond just a good service to actually change the world with the seed, with the destiny that he has planted in each one of us. See, if you heard Joe clearly, he said something that is, is a key. You might have missed it. And I, I, he said, when I was on the airplane, yeah. no movies, he shut off this, he shut off that. You can actually get in a, a phase where you just, you get lazy. But he said he shut off this, he shut off that, and he was just obsessed with writing this thing, writing down chapters. And I was interviewed today uh, by uh, Jude and the team. There you are at the back there. And you asked me what I love to do. And I gave some nice answer, but then also said, I love to work. Mm. It sounds so unspiritual. But I said, I've fallen in love with hard work. When God, when the Bible in Genesis, I'm not talking about works unto salvation. We got that clear, right? When it says that God created the world in Genesis, it mentions three times how he did it. Three times it says how he made the earth. It says he worked. Can you believe that? And then even when it mentions rest, he rested from his work. Mm. If you study the lives of any history maker, any successful person, Christian or not, you will find the common denominator of hard work. They love to work. Come on. And you see a key here. A book came out of the ability to say no to some things and say yes to pulling right. product down from heaven. Right. Work, prayer, and work is the way to pull product down from heaven yeah. into raw material. Yeah. And that's what history makers did for you. Doug, prophes Doug Addison prophesied out of this pulpit 
you know, when we had dinner, he said, there's three books ready to come out of you. I'm already into my second one, and I am already putting things down for my third one that is going to be a series of a children's book. But now I'm prophesying nine <laughs> books, Joe. You but here's the thing. So here's I'm what we do. need long trips overseas here, <laughs> on planes. <laughs> here's what we do, though. Every person in this room can write a book. Come on. If you're illiterate, you can write a book. The issue will always be whether you know how. Come on. It's what you know. And we tend to, when we get a prophecy, we leave it in the prophetic realm for God to do for us. And that's why most of these people will tell their story. They'll say, you know, I had a prophecy years ago, but nothing came of it. And, and there are times when God sovereignly does it, but you turned off the movie and turned on your brain. There was nights, I mean, there was nights I would sit in my backyard and write until 2.30 in the morning. You can't shut it off. It was suddenly, as soon as I stepped into it, as soon as I said yes, suddenly there was this open portal that it just, it, it's a nonstop. Paul said, we have been given this grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of the Gentiles. Yep. Grace is what he's talking about. History makers training baptizes you into a grace that produces genuine apostolic ministry and, and work. So... Uh, they can pre they can pre order tonight, right? Yeah. Twelve dollars. Yeah. Okay. G maybe cool. give them the information. They go to the back. The back. There's the back table. Thank you so much. Bless you guys. Oh wow. Uh, oh yeah, we have something for for Joe and Bella. Somebody get my better hat. Somebody get my wife on fire. She's the one with the fire hair. Pinkish. You can't miss her. Okay, uh, Joel, while well, they're getting Bella, can you come up here quickly and mention the trip to Greece? History Maker Society is now doing trips. We're doing trips to Israel. We're doing trips to Greece. We're doing trips to Germany. Uh, Joel, take us through quickly while we, while we wait for Bella. What's happening Absolutely. with Greece? Uh, in April of next year, we're going to be taking a Steps of Paul tour of Greece. Uh, Derek is going to be following in the Steps of Paul. We're going to start, let's go to the next slide, and then the next. We're going to start in Neapolis, which is modern-day Kavala. It's the place where Paul landed in Greece around 50 A.D. It was the first time that the gospel was ever presented in Europe. So this is a very historic place. From Kavala, he went to uh, Philippi. Let's go to the next slide, please. And there's a huge uh, ruins there, nothing there but the ruins, where Paul was actually imprisoned, where he appealed to Rome, uh, where Lydia was actually saved and baptized in the river. The river runs through these ruins. We're going to be standing on that ground, and then from Philippi, we're going to be headed into Thessaloniki, and I wanted to make sure you knew that we're not staying in, in youth hostels. That building in the center is the five-star hotel we'll be staying in when we're in Thessaloniki. Okay? So that ought to get you to go if nothing else does. Uh, then from there, we're going to be in Thessaloniki, but we're going to see the ruins. And, and Thessaloniki is a very interesting place because all around Thessaloniki are the ancient ruins that were developed, that, were, that the city was built around. So there's all these places where you can see uh, the actual places where Paul was and where the Romans were in Thessaloniki. And, of course, Alexander the Great was there. Everybody who is somebody has been through Thessaloniki at some point. Uh, you can also, we're going to be visiting beautiful Greek Orthodox churches there. We'll also have some time to go into the marketplace where you'll see things like these spice racks just out, all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Matt, do you, Matt, vegetables. Matt, do you believe in the, in the shopping anointing? <laughs> do you, you have the shopping? I do. You have the shopping anointing? I bet you do. Well, in Thessaloniki, we're going to test to see who has the shopping anointing. <laughs> uh, from Thessaloniki, we're going to Berea where you can actually... Stand on the steps that legend has it, and, and the belief is that Paul stood on these marble steps and preached to the Bereans uh, in a town the Greeks call Berea. From, from Berea, we're going to be going through the interior of Greece and seeing some things that you would never think you would see in Greece, mountains and valleys, 
these rocks, they look like they've just been set down by a, by a spaceship or a meteorite or something. In fact, it's Meteora, Greece right there. From there, we're going to be traveling on uh, to Nephplion, which is the original capital of modern Greece. It's sitting down on the Peloponnese Islands, uh, right, off, right near the islands on the edge of the mainland, surrounded by water. From there, we're going to be traveling on uh, to Corinth, where we'll be able to stand in front of the Bema seat where Paul was actually tried. And this particular marble, uh, little marble statue that stand up there, you had to place your hand on that marble statue and swear to tell the truth when you were under judgment uh, by the ruler of Corinth. And Paul actually stood in front of that marble and put his hand on that piece of marble right there. Basilius Tirbus, the man on your left, is a Greek lawyer and a pastor. He's planted three churches in, uh, two churches in Corinth, and, or one church in Corinth and two churches in Athens. He's going to be on this trip with us talking about what the history of modern or ancient Greece is, what the history of modern Greece is, how those interact, while Derek's going to be sharing what was going on with the Gospels when Paul was traveling through here. Uh, before he was writing these books, he was visiting all the places that he was writing to because he was creating churches there. Uh, from ancient Corinth, we're also going to be able to go to the fortress Corinth, uh, which was a pagan uh, temple, but it was also the place where everybody fled to on the hill over Corinth anytime there were invaders that came in. From Corinth, we're going to be, you can also see the canal that was actually started by Nero, the emperor of Rome, uh, who was famous for killing Christians. It was not completed until about 100 years ago, and it's a canal now that separates uh, one of the oceans with the port of, Cor or with the uh, Bay of Corinth. And we can, you can stop, we may even take a boat through that while we're there if Derek will let us. Uh, from, from Corinth, we're going to then finish up in Athens and have three or four days in Athens. Uh, and we're going to be able to see all of the parts of Athens that you would want to see, the Parthenon. This is, that was the Temple of Zeus. This is, this is actually a view out the hotel window from the five-star hotel we're going to be staying in while we're in Athens. This is off the balcony of the hotel of the Parthenon up on the Acropolis. So if people want to go, what do they have to do? Okay, you got Mars Hill. Let's go through to the end slides right here. Uh, you need to email me if you have any interest at all at joel, J-O-E-L, at I-H-R-G dot O-R-G. That's I-H-R-G dot O-R-G. And it's Joel. You can also go in. Uh, if you go to I-H-R-G.org, there's a travel button there that you can pull up the dates for the trip, the cost for the trip, an itinerary that shows you where we're going to be and those kinds of things so you can look at all of that. It's all available at that website right there. But Derek is going to be with us, and he's going to be preaching at every one of these sites and talking about what Paul was doing when he was here. Joel, of course, is, is our all-star attorney and just a great man of God, has done tremendous social justice work with, uh, uh, related to the sex trade, sex trafficking in Europe and, and all over the place, good friend of our ministry, uh, part of our History Maker Society, giving direction to our television programs. He's flown here with his cousin, uh, David. Uh, and family as well. Can we just honor him and show him some love tonight? Thank you, Joel. You drove. They drove. That's that deserves a. They drove from Atlanta. You drove from Atlanta. That's right. You're driving back tomorrow. <coughs> All right. Good. All right, Rohan. What have we got? Come on, come on up here, guys. So uh, again, we just wanted to honor honor both you, Joe, and your beautiful wife, Bella. And doesn't Bella mean beautiful and uh, okay? I thought as much, right? And uh, we just wanted to present this gift as a token of our appreciation for being true history makers. We thank you for releasing your husband to travel to all these different places so he can get the inspiration to write these books, right? And we're so excited about what God has done, what he's doing, and what he's going to continue to do. And, you know, I know that this church is definitely a platform that's going to be drawing people, right, not only to take history makers, but to be transformed and to go out there in their community and to, and to impact their community at large. So we love you. Let's honor God Pastor Joe and Bella Garcia. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, tonight, want to just mention a couple things related to finances, but we're not going to take up an offering now. Uh, <coughs> Matt Sorger is going to help us with that uh, as during his ministry time. So we're excited about that. 
But uh, you probably have one of these on your seat. Aisha or Jackie, do they have one of these on their seat? They do? Okay. This is our partnership card. Uh, we, we have partners that help us to do what we do. A lot of the places you go to, especially Bulgaria and Namibia, these different places, uh, you find out that many people can't afford to take a training. But through our scholarship program, we're able to help people to actually get into a training so that they can do something significant. I often uh, use Crossy as an example who couldn't afford to take the History Makers training. Somebody sponsored him through our partnership program and uh, he ended up taking the training and then founded a drug rehabilitation center there, an addictions re rehab center there. Pretty amazing stuff. So if you open up the card, you'll see that we have the option for a one-time donation. You can do that. Or you can also, yes, it says at the bottom, I want to become a monthly. We have different categories. A ministry partner, $30 or more. Global missions partner, 50 or more. Scholarship partner, and of course our television and media bills, which we still have some outstanding things related to the, our Beyond the Four Walls TV show. So if you would like to partner with us, we would love to have you join us. There are plenty of perks for partnering with History Maker Society. And uh, we would ask that you just fill out this card. And when offering time comes, all you do is put this thing in, in the bucket as it comes by your way. You also have the opportunity to give a one-time uh, tonight. And you can specify where, where you want it to go. So that's good. Now, speaking of books, we've got books for sale. Matt and Stephanie, have you b brought any product or no? You have product? So there is product at the back. You'll probably speak more to that. Uh, so you guys can, can pick and choose over there. Uh, of course, we have my staple book, Beyond the Four Walls, From Revival to Societal Transformation. This is $20 at the back. We take Interact, Visa, all of that. Then my sort of latest book, uh, His Kingdom, Your Purpose, The Manual for Destiny and Transformation. This book has the content that we use uh, to train and equip leaders to be effective. Th this book is just like gold. So... We uh, sell this for $25 at the back. Then we have the History Makers Training, the Handbook for Church Reformation and Societal Transformation. Inside this book is the content of the History Makers Training. And because of that, we only make this available to graduates, people who have gone through the training. You can purchase this. So if you're going to try to purchase this book tonight, you're going to have to prove that you went through the training. Tell us that you did. We'll probably believe you. I'm sure you're not going to lie. I'm sure you're not going to lie. And, uh, you know, you can get this at the back. Now, this contains a lot of our systems, how to reach 10,000 people in two years, how to reach 1,000 people. All of that stuff is in here. That's why this book costs $60. 60 bucks for this book if you've taken the training. Now, my personal favorite right now, I got to kind of co-write with our transformation pastor, Aisha Francis, at the back there, you can see her. Many of you know her incredible story after taking History Makers training. She wrote this book, Sowing Seeds of Change. But I like the subtitle better. Developing Leaders and Their Visions for the Business of Transforming Nations. Can you believe this stuff is being pulled down from heaven? Sowing seeds of change, developing leaders and their visions for the business of transforming nations. Inside this book has kind of the how-to, taking your organization, your ministry from seed form and the business side, the branding side, everything very practical on how to start something, including the prayer work on dealing with binding the strong man and all of that. All of that is in here. Aisha, how much is it? $25? 25 dollars 25 yeah, $25 <coughs> right here, and you can get that at the back. Please pick it up, have her sign it, and uh, I co-wrote it with her, and I, I can tell you, the content in here is revolutionary, revolutionary content in here. So is there anything else that we had to do tonight? I don't think so. Uh, I think as far as announcements, maybe we'll just let you know that there is a History Makers training that is happening here. Can we throw that up, Bruce? And I'll just read, is it behind me? I'll just quickly read the bio. 
It's happening right here. History Makers Academy is one of the most unique training and equipping experiences of our day. An academy training module is typically three and a half days in length and facilitates an environment designed to rewire a person for supernatural living and achieving real results in their calling. The tools and training presented at the History Makers Academy are a collection of world-leading and time-tested strategies. They provide attendees with everything they need to develop a life that produces real transformation and lasting results. They are the principles and strategies known and understood by the small population of society that governs society. The stories you are hearing at this conference are a result of ordinary individuals who took a three-day training and are now making history. No matter who you are, it is almost impossible to attend a history maker's training and not produce astonishing results both during and in the years following. So you can register tonight for this, for this tra training at the back table, January 11th to 14th here at the River Church. Early bird rate is $295. Late bird is $320. Early bird ends December 15th. So you're going you're gonna to want to get in on that. So I am so excited. You know, I knew Stephanie Sorger. She's not even here right now. But uh, they'll probably have a great announcement to make. But I knew Stephanie in the youth group days when we were having revival there. And I was so happy when she met Matt Sorger in Africa. That was your first meet with Heidi Baker's ministry there. Divine appointment. And all of a sudden, you know, they're married. Photos are being splashed all over Facebook. And Matt is just professing his love for her. It was so beautiful. It is so beautiful. They're a wonderful couple. It's just our pleasure tonight to have Matt Sorger with us. He is a revivalist. Uh, you know, we use these terms, but I've come to respect more the term friend of God. Because when you're a friend of God, you pay a price and you have the results. And Matt has paid a price and he has the results. He is adorned with purity, uh, the anointing goes wherever he goes. He loves God. He loves the glory. He loves the presence of God. And it's hard to imagine having, you know, one of these conferences with, without him. We're so honored that he's here. I just want to give it over to him for him to minister. Tomorrow night, you'll be here again. Is that correct? And we want to have an anointing and impartation time, commissioning uh, leaders after your ministry time, like after you preach. We want to lay hands on everybody, sending them out beyond the four walls. So you, me, and whoever else here will lay hands and, and just go for it. I know he'll be, he'll be ready to go. Can we give a good, warm welcome to Matt Sorger? Oh, man. What happened, church, tonight? This is what Jesus came to do to anoint us, not just so that we can have an experience, but anoint us so that we can be sent by Him to change the world. Really, that's, that is what it's all about. Isn't that true? I felt such an anointing during worship tonight. I was like, Lord, how am I going to get up and preach in this? Oh, Jesus. And then to hear all of the testimonies of lives that are being changed and commissioned and sent to really practically bring the gospel. How many realize that we're not anointed to complain about problems? We're anointed to be the solution for the problem. And if you want to really be a steward of the anointing of God, it's more than just identifying a problem. It's then getting the wisdom of God, the mind of God, and the anointing of God to step into become the solution for that problem. How many here want to be a solution? How many want the anointing to, I mean, whether it's to heal the sick, to set someone free, to feed the poor, to save and rescue a sex trafficked victim. I mean, however, I mean, to go into the political realm and influence politics, to go into the medical realm and influence medicine, to go into media and Hollywood and influ influence that realm with the light and glory of God. Come on now. God is breaking the boxes. Can I just declare that tonight? 
God really is breaking all the boxes. He's breaking them. He's breaking you out. I heard T.D. Jakes a few days ago. He made this statement. He says, you have to be very careful that you don't get incarcerated by the labels people put on you. In other words, people may look at you in one role, but God may have so much more in you besides that one label, like preacher, evangelist. There may also be a businessman on the inside of you, or a lawyer on the inside of you, or an attorney on the in- or something on the inside of you. More than just one label. And the reality is, God is really good at breaking the labels that limit us. Come on now, church. It's time to break out. I mean, that's what this whole thing is about. It's about breaking out of the limitations, the small thinking, thinking, you know, I can only do this one thing. Look, if God calls you to do that one thing, then you do that one thing. But don't, but don't think you have to just be limited to that one thing. Because God may have other streams and other anointings and other creative things that he wants to release in you and through you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Come on. You know what I, you know, God is going to give us the mind of Christ. And I think the mind of Christ, yes, it includes knowing who you are in Christ and knowing who God is in you. And, you know, it's, it's having his thoughts, but it's also having the creative mind of God. When we have the mind of Christ, you know what that does? It breaks us out of the limits of our own thinking. And we get to step into creativity that is heavenly and supernatural. Praise God for that. We're not limited to our own stinking thinking. We can have heavenly creativity, heavenly inspiration, a heavenly mind, ideas, thoughts, to create systems, strategies, structures that break outside of all the limits that we have thought we've had to live in. You don't have to live inside of limits. There are no limits in God. You could go as high, as far as you want to. All you have to do is say yes. There is so much power in the yes. And sometimes God comes to us and he says, I want you to do this. And the first question we say is how? Because we want to know the details. We want to understand how do I do this? It seems so much bigger than me. It seems so much greater than me. I don't even know what to do, how to do it. But I've learned something from God the first question or the first response is not how it's yes God's looking just for you to say yes because when you say yes then God begins to unfold the revelation and the strategy and his mind and his thoughts and his ways and he begins to unfold it before you but it has to start with the yes when you say yes something supernatural goes into activation When you say yes, something opens up in the spirit where an anointing and a grace is released upon you to walk out what God is calling you to do. And he doesn't always show you the whole picture all at once. Many times there's an unfolding of revelation, but it begins with the yes. So what is God calling you to do? Who is God calling you to be? Don't get stuck in small thinking. Don't say, well, I'm just a housewife, just a mom. Well, number one, there's never just a mom and there's never just a housewife. Those callings are powerful in and of themselves. But I don't want you to be limited by a label. How many know what I'm saying tonight? How many hear what I'm saying tonight? It's time to take all the labels off, all the limits off. And shock yourself. And shock everyone else around you. And what God could do in you and through you. But it starts with a yes. Now I remember, after me and Stephanie got married, I was in prayer one day. And as I was praying, God began to speak to my heart. And he, sa- and he shared his mind with me. He shared his heart with me. He said, Matt, I want you to find the lost children in the world. And my first question was, how? How do I do that, God? That sounds like a really big thing. How do I do it? But God wasn't looking 
for me to say how. He was looking for my yes. And as I was in that secret place of prayer, communing with God, I said to him, yes. Yes, God, I'll do it. And a commissioning came on me. When I said yes, I'm going to tell you what happened. When I said yes, I started to get strategy, creative thoughts that my mind had never thought of before. Thoughts started to come into my mind. Strategy started to come into my mind. People started to come in my path. Things started to come together that I could not orchestrate in my own flesh, strength, or ability. But when I said yes, alignment started to happen. Relationships started to happen. Strategy started to happen. And now as we stand here tonight, we, we have seen now almost, two, almost 200 children rescued from sex trafficking. From a yes, from a yes, from a yes. Not just, not just saying to a prophetic word, oh God, that prophetic word sounds really good. Maybe one day it will actually happen. How many times do we receive words from God, whether in private prayer or words from someone else, and we say, yes, hopefully that one day, that would be great, God, if that happened. And then we just sit back and do nothing. God wants your yes, and then he wants your hands, and he wants your feet, and he wants your mind, and he wants your life, and then you partner with him, you co-labor with him, you create with him. You step into divine creativity. And God begins to take a thought, an idea, and he begins to give life to it. He begins to give flesh to it. And suddenly now you are co-creating with God and bringing and birthing something into the world that was not there before. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. There's co-creators in this room here tonight. There are co-creators in this room tonight. And when I say co-creators, I mean co-laborers with heaven. You have all the resources of heaven. You know that? All the resources. Of, resource, you're not limited to your own resources. You got the resources of heaven. You're not limited to your own mind. You got the mind of Christ. You're not limited to your own thoughts. You have his divine creativity. Oh, hallelujah. Because I know there's destiny on the inside of you that God wants to birth. God wants to bring forth. God wants to release it into the world. But it starts with the yes. So he said yes to God. And I want to share... So now I want to share a testimony with you because it just really goes along with the theme. And I feel an anointing on this present moment for something. God's just shifting everything around. Praise the Lord. So we had built our rescue one. And I share this as a testimony of the theme of what is happening here tonight uh, about the go. And I'm going to see where this goes in a little bit. But <laughs> praise the Lord. We saw a very strong foundation and base built in India where we saw and we've seen and now we have 160 children rescued from sex trafficking and abandonment just in India. Now we've launched into the Philippines and every one of our girls in the Philippines, little girls have come out of severe traumatic sex trafficking, pornogra child pornography rings, okay? This is like the darkest of the dark places that you can go to bring the light of God but like I said before we're not called to complain about a problem we're called to become the solution to the problem and I firmly believe that if God shows you something there's something in you to bring a solution to it I firmly believe that and and uh, one of our girls in the Philippines her name is Kayla I just want you to see what God is doing she was sold into slavery from the time she was eight years old Kayla was kidnapped and forced to live in a pig pen she was routinely raped and sold for money by a gang of traffickers. One of our young girls who was rescued a few months earlier, and living in the safety of our home, alerted the team to Kayla's captivity. She and Kayla had been trafficked together and she refused to leave Kayla behind. Our team on the ground sprang into action and rescued her just a few days before her 12th birthday. We were able to celebrate her birthday, her freedom, and her new life. Now that she is safe, Kayla needs, well, she's rescued and is now going through healing and freedom and transformation from what she's been pulled out of. But that's one little girl in the Philippines. Now look, you will never know how your little yes will impact the lives of so many other people. Never underestimate your yes. 
and what God can release through your life. Your one little yes and step of obedience can have, it's like a pebble dropped in a pond. And you think, oh, what is that little pebble going to do? But as it drops in the pond, ripples form. There's, a, there's an effect. There's a cause and effect. There's ripples that go out. Every yes you say and every decision you make and every step of obedience you take in your life and co-laboring and co-creating with God, it's like a pebble dropped. And you will, you might not even see here generations that are impacted because of your yes. Because this is way bigger than just our present moment. This is, you know, this is way bigger than even our own sense of personal fulfillment. Although God wants us to feel fulfilled, he, he, he wants that, but yet it's way bigger than even just that. It's way bigger than even just that. How your obedience to God affects generations to come. Affects generations. Oh, hallelujah. How many are ready to say yes to God tonight? To receive his mind, his heart, his thoughts, his heavenly strategy, and his anointing to do what he's called you to do. His anointing. I feel like there is a grace in this moment right now. There's a grace in this moment. And I'm going to minister and we'll flow and just see what God wants to do here. But I feel like there's a grace in this moment to sow into this. That's what I feel. There's a grace right now to sow into this. Because I feel like your yes is a seed that starts something. And I feel like tonight there's something of heaven that is on the seed that we'll sow here tonight. And it's like maybe there's a dream in your heart or maybe there's something in you that you know is waiting to come out. You know you were created for more. You know there is a purpose, a higher purpose and call and destiny on your life. But it starts with that seed. And I feel like tonight, even as we sow into this, as we sow into this anointing, this momentum, this movement, of a collective company of people moving in the same direction that we can plant a seed into this tonight and that seed will produce an oak tree. A multiplication of influence. And I feel that tonight. I feel like God is releasing a grace here where your influence is about to be multiplied. There is a new season, church, that we are coming into. You have to catch the wind of the Spirit when He moves. Understand this. It's not always just about having a good idea. It's catching the wind of the Spirit. When God begins to move, you catch it in the moment and life is breathed on it and multiplication happens. That's why if you delay, you can miss a moment. You got to understand that. Because God may have a message on the inside of you he wants the world to hear. But because you delay in writing it in a book, there may be a moment where God says, now it's time for that message to be released. Not five years from now, not ten years from now, but now. This is the time for that message to be released. But if you delay, you can miss that moment. You can miss that wind. You can miss that grace. So don't delay when you get creative thoughts from God. Because there's timing involved with those things. Come on now. It's not just about having the, the, the God idea. It's also catching the timing of it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we're going to be an on-time people. Come on now, I decree over you tonight, you're going to be an on-time person. You're going to be an on-time person where you're going to hear God. You're going to know His voice. You're going to be in sync with heaven. 
You're going to be willing to roll up your sleeves and work. When God says go, you're going to go. You're going to move. God's going to breathe on it. He's going to multiply it. He's going to increase your influence, your effectiveness. And he's going to enlarge your capacity to accomplish more than you ever thought you could do. I feel this is there's just a grace on this tonight. God is about, I'm telling you, there's an anointing on people that are here this weekend where God is about to launch you into a new capacity of influence and impact. There's a dream in you that's about to come forth to a whole new level. There's a seed in you that's about to be born. There's a baby in you that's about to come forth. There's a vision in you that's about to take feet and it's about to start running. And God says, awake, oh sleeper. Wake up. Catch the wind. Know the moment. And move. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's such an anointing and grace on this. We're going to sow a seed in this atmosphere. Come on now. How many want to sow a seed in this atmosphere? We need to sow a seed in this atmosphere. So grab your envelopes. Grab the partner thing. Grab the... Yeah, what you have there. There's floating machines around here. I love the technology. Because if you want to sow and you say, Oh, I don't have cash well you have a credit card or a check you can use credit card you can use cash check whatever there's there's you could give in any way you want thank you jesus i want to make sure that we do this the interact machines do they work up here you got them working up here now they should be if they're not they'll be working at the back but what i'd like to do if it's possible matt if it's okay can can we send people right to the interact machines right now yes back? yes that let's would be, do it okay that let's would take be good them to timing. the back so people aren't doing it up here in front of the stage and cameras if you're going to give go directly to the back we have the interact machines there for visa debit all of that feel free to do that that's yeah. awesome yeah so if you want to give by credit card tonight just slip to the back that's perfect whatever god speaks to your heart just so just obey God. Just say yes to the Lord. But I feel like there are moments, there are moments to sow. There are moments to plant. And whenever we sow in the Spirit, it doesn't just reach, reap a natural harvest. I believe an eternal harvest. I believe an eternal harvest. So Father, we just pray right now. Father, over this offering tonight, I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that we're not limited to ourselves. And Father, I thank you, Jesus, that we can be generous because your heart is generous. And Father, I also believe, I also believe, Father, that people in this room are going to need to know you as their source and provider. Because they're going to need divine provision for the vision that you give them. And Father, even as we sow tonight, we acknowledge that you are the source, you are our provider, you are everything that we need. And Father, even as we sow tonight, in obedience to you we look to you father as the source all the days of our life in the name of jesus bless this offering tonight bless your people tonight i thank you lord for a season of multiplication and harvest increase impact and influence over the body of christ and over those that you're raising up here in this room. I feel like I'm talking to people that God is raising up. God's hand is on you. He's raising you up. He's creating you. Forming you. For a great purpose.
Jesus. 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 I feel like God wants to release keys tonight. I want that singing anointing that Derek has. And that voice started coming out of you tonight. I was like, man, could have been a singer. <laughs> could have been a traveling singer up there. <laughs> man, you brought me back 20 years to my Bible school days with that song. We sang that all the time. Hungry for a mighty move. Of, how many are hungry for a mighty move of God? hungry for a mighty move of God. I feel like there's people here tonight that God wants to refresh. I really feel that. It's like some of you have felt like you've been in a battle and you've been in the desert and God wants to refresh you tonight. I just really feel there's a heavenly refreshing. How many, how many feel that that word is for you? Let me just see because I feel like God is really wanting to just release a, a supernatural refreshing that just washes the warfare away that washes just washes it all away makes you new makes you new and I feel that tonight God wants to wash over you and make all things new wants to wash away hope deferred he wants to wash away the warfare of the past season he wants to wash away the battle that you've been contending with and release new life on the inside of you oh hallelujah jesus someone's getting it oh hallelujah new life new life yeah, he's going to wash away hope deferred from the past season. Some of you have walked through some things that have tried to shake your faith. Have tried to produce a hope deferred on the inside of you. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's a strategy of the enemy to bring hope deferred. God wants to wash away hope deferred. And he wants to renew a childlike faith on the inside of you, where all things become new again. Oh, where God makes not just your spirit new, but your soul, your mind, your flesh, your heart, your vision, your faith, your relationship with him, your, your intimacy with him, your, everything new. Yeah, just let it happen right now. He comes like a waterfall. He comes like a waterfall and he washes over you right now. You bring new life tonight. You release a waterfall of glory. 
you wash away the warfare of the past season father you wash away the warfare of the past season no weapon formed against you will prosper the Bible doesn't say that no weapon will ever be formed the enemy loves to form weapons to distract and discourage and hinder but God promises those weapons won't prosper those weapons won't be successful those weapons won't fulfill their intended purpose because God is so big that he's always steps ahead of a weapon the enemy forms in fact God is so big that he's able to use that weapon to position you for promotion the things that the enemy intended to take you out with God says oh no that's not gonna prosper that's not gonna succeed in fact I'm gonna use that thing for my servants good to position him or her into the right place at the right time for my purpose to be fulfilled no weapon formed will prosper oh yeah everything forged by the enemy to take you out God says your point of pain is going to become your place of power the place of your deepest struggle will become the area of your greatest anointing and authority I want you to hear this the place of your deepest struggle where the enemy says I'm gonna take him out I'm gonna take her out the place of your deepest pain and struggle will become the place of your greatest power and authority in fact what I see right now the place of pain in the heart God is saying it's like a hole in the heart I see it it's like a hole inside the heart God is saying that hole is not going to destroy you God saying he's gonna fill it with his love and you're gonna experience a depth of the love of God greater than you have ever experienced before you're gonna be a conduit of the love of God you're gonna be a conduit of the grace of God a conduit of the heart of God where the hole has been in your heart God says I'm gonna fill it with my heart God says in fact I'm gonna replace your heart with my heart I'm gonna give you my heart that's what God is saying right now and there's a well deep inside of you and at times the enemy has fought hard to bury that well At times, the enemy has fought hard to cover that well. But God says that weapon will not prosper. That weapon will not succeed. For God says, I'm opening up a new well. God says, I'm opening up a new well.
Shondarabandore Shondarabando Giants were made to fall. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Every giant that you have contended with in your past season, God says, He's anointing you to take it down. And it will not follow you into your land of promise. God says, I'm displacing the giants that have tried to dispossess you from your land of promise. God says it's been the strategy of the enemy to strategically place giants in your land of promise to dispossess you from what God says is yours, from your inheritance. And God says, I'm anointing you to take those giants down. And God says they will not succeed and they will not be able to displace or dispossess you from your land of inheritance. Oh, oh. oh, for tonight, the Lord is coming with a refreshing rain. The Lord is coming with a refreshing wind right now over both of you. The Lord is coming tonight. And he says, he says, Oh, shakarabando, shondarabate, ko. God is with you every step. God is with you every step of the way. God knows the journey has been hard. God knows the journey has been difficult. God knows the journey has been wearisome at times and tiresome at times but the Lord says I am coming with a fresh wind over your life and God says I am with you and I want you to know that I am with you I am walking every single step with you God says my strength is your strength I'm standing with you There's a new wind coming into your sails. There's a new wind coming, whoa, into your sails. At times you've sat there and you've looked around. And you've said, God, it feels like we're not moving. We're not going anywhere. And the Lord says, a new wind is coming into your sails. It's going to begin to take motion and momentum. And the Lord says, you're going to move with my wind. The Lord brought you here tonight. Whoa. He's releasing an impartation into you right now. He's releasing an anointing into you right now. Hope. Your glory brings strength. 
Your glory brings renewing. There's a renewing happening in you right now. There's a renewing happening in you. Right now. Whoa. He blows away the dust. God says, you were created to bring heaven to earth. Whoa. God says, I knit you together in your mother's womb. And I formed you. And I called you even from your mother's womb. And I created you to be a vessel that brings heaven to earth. And at times the enemy has fought really hard. to displace you from that call. But God says, you're a vessel created by me to bring heaven to earth in more ways than one. Through worship, through preaching, through teaching, and yes, through business, God says a multifaceted anointing, a multifaceted calling like a diamond, a multifaceted diamond with many reflections and refractions revealing and revelating the glory of God in more ways than one and God says you won't be limited to just one But there's something happened in the realm of your heart tonight. And it's like I see that the enemy strategized to create a hole in your heart. But God is saying that weapon will not prosper against you. And God is saying, and I feel it tonight, God is saying, I'm pouring my love into that place in your heart. And it's like I see the Lord recreating your heart. Giving you a brand new heart on the inside. God says you will not walk around as a wounded soldier. God says you will not walk around with a wounded heart. God says you will not walk around with a hole in your heart. God says I am recreating your heart and I am putting a new heart on the inside of you. And God says you will know the depths of my love. You will know the depths of communion with me. For God says, you are my vessel. And you will walk whole and complete in me. Whoa! You will walk whole and complete in me. (laughs) 
and the enemy will not take advantage. The enemy will not take advantage. But I see right now God cutting off. I see God cutting off demonic strategy to take advantage of your heart. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, every assignment and strategy sent to take advantage or to displace right now in the name of Jesus it breaks it breaks it breaks and God says I am restoring lost years I am restoring lost days I am restoring I am restoring God says I am restoring lost years and the Lord says you will fly to the heights that I intended you to fly to God says you will soar and you will fly to the heights that I have intended for you to fly to for God says, you will fly high in me with strong wings. You will not have clipped wings. You will not have wounded wings or damaged wings. God says you will have strong wings. And you will soar to the heights that I created you to soar to. Whoa! And there will be many eagles that arise around you. There will be many eagles that rise up with you. A company of eagles. Shurababababato robo shiki yabate. this room all over this room if if you feel tonight that you need that renewing from the Lord just stand to your feet I want to catch the wind of the spirit tonight Lord there's a wind of renewing Whoa, breathing over you tonight.
this place is a well. God has created this place to be a well. A habitation of his presence. A house of his presence. This is a house of his presence. And a well. And I even see coming a new well springing forth. For God says from this place, a well, even a new well, will be opened to you. And many will come. Whoa, many will come. To find life, healing, joy, freedom, compassion, love, me. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. Oh, it's coming right over here. There's an anointing. Whoa. just receive it right now because this is God's agenda for tonight this is God's agenda whoa uh, he's making the warrior strong he's making the warrior strong whoa he's calling the wounded warriors and he's saying I'm gonna make you strong wow Oh, here comes the wind of God. Here comes the wind of God. in a song oh just worship right now just worship because right now there's a waterfall
Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Father, we receive the new breath of heaven. Oh, just lift your hands all over this room. Lord, we receive the new breath of heaven. There is alignment happening in the spirit right now. Things are being put in place for the new season. He is aligning he is opening doors. He is causing your steps to fall in pleasant places. Tonight, we receive the breath of heaven. We receive the breath of life.
I feel like God, even tonight, is bringing strategic alignment into history makers, into this ministry, strategic alignment for the next season. Jesus. Jesus. Burning me. Burning in me. Holy Ghost fire. Burning me. Burning me tonight. Burning I see God bringing two things together. I see revival and I see reformation. But I see both of them marrying and coming together. There's going to be there's going to be a fresh wind and a fresh fire of a revival anointing, authentic, fresh move of the Holy Spirit that will come together with an outward reformation. And an outward movement. God says it's not one or the other. God says it's both. God says I have called you to both. And God says you will walk in both and you will experience both. And there is coming, there is coming a authentic, fresh fire of revival that will be mobilized with reformation. And it will be the two walking together. It won't be the old. It won't be the old. But it will be the two walking together. And there'll be expressions of both. God has been here all night and he is just here he's just here but I feel like I'm not supposed to preach anymore I just feel like God did what he wanted to do which was maybe different from what I originally anticipated but it's awesome because I just love God doing what he wants to do You know, sometimes we think we have to come and just have this word. It's new teaching, but you know, I feel like tonight's different. I feel like tonight God's purpose and agenda was different. So we receive what God is doing. Get ready, eagles. You're going to fly higher than you've ever gone before. Hallelujah. And you're not going to fly alone. God's going to bring all the eagles up with you to fly together. To fly together. 
The eagles are not going to fly alone. They're going to fly together. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Look, I, uh, we got resources back there. I can't go into all of them now. They're back there. Trust me, and they're anointed. Just go and read through some of them and get something, okay? Thank you. I, uh, I am absolutely blown away. I mean, you know, it's one of those nights where you kind of have to decide if I come to take in a service or if I come to meet with the Lord. And this was a come to meet with the Lord night. And, uh, it was just unbelievable accuracy. Unbelievable accuracy. And the Spirit of God, it was like, Matt, you know, not to talk about you too much, but you, you're just a conduit tonight for God to minister individually. It's one thing I've come to know about Jesus. And one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, I find, you know, the Holy Spirit always reveals Jesus. It's all about Jesus. When he comes that way, uh, he does something similar to the ministry of Jesus when Jesus walked the earth and was able to walk through a crowd and pull Zacchaeus down. And Jesus had a way of making you feel like it was just all about you. He, he had a way of pulling you out of the crowd. And one of the profound manifestations of the Holy Spirit is that he has a way of meeting, making everybody in the room feel as though he's just there to meet with them. That was the administration of the Holy Spirit tonight. I mean, I know, I know some people in this room and some things you said. And for my own life, I, I, said, I just said, God, I, I'll just tell you after. I just cried like a baby. <sighs> right now, it kind of feels like when you go see an incredible movie and then, and then it ends. And you're like, I feel like, I feel like I, is there a part two? <laughs> and there is. <laughs> you know, we've got tomorrow morning and tomorrow night Matt Sorger is back with us. Uh, I want to encourage you to do something, uh, because I believe this is a word of knowledge. Uh, when the presence of God comes like that, when you go home tonight, many of you are going to feel the fire still burning. This is the word of the Lord. And you're going to be drawn to your Bible again. You're going to be drawn to prayer again, and you need to feed that. This was impartational tonight, and you need to feed it immediately so that it gives birth to a momentum in your life, because that is what happened tonight. I'm so grateful. Jesus, thank you for your servant, Matt, who was here with us tonight. And you know, Jesus, Matt just pales in comparison to you. We ministers just come so short of who you are. Thank you for ministering through Matt the way you did tonight in such a profound way. We just want to let you know that we love you so much and we're so grateful. We're so grateful, Holy Spirit, that you visited us tonight. You touched our hearts, you delivered people, you healed people, you ministered to people, you spoke to people. And Father, I pray that you would bless Matt and Stephanie for their unending faithfulness to your call for the sacrifices they've made that nobody knows about. I pray for an increase of favor over their lives. I pray protection over the new things that will be born. I pray, Lord, that you would increase every level of Matt's ministry, that the grace and apostleship 
would rest on him in such a profound way in the next season of his life. That he would find fulfillment as a, as, as a husband, as a man, in every, every one of those areas that you're giving to him. But even his ministry would blossom in, in, in such an extraordinary way. That, Lord, you would increase the influence, you'd increase the reach. Lord, that you would bring him before King. We thank you for your prophet of God that has been with us tonight and will be with us tomorrow night. All over this place, would you just stand to your feet as we close? Lord, we honor you for what you've done here tonight. We bless you. We love you. We're thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. I would encourage you on the way out to visit on Matt's table. They are anointed. Stop by there. Of course, we've got the book table to your right, my left. Tomorrow morning is not 9.30 a.m. as it has been. It's going to be 10 a.m. And there will be no afternoon workshop. You can go home to your roast beef dinner or whatever you do on Sundays. Some corn on the cob. Hot tub. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it is. And then in the evening, 7 o'clock, and plus the anointing and commissioning time. So God bless you as you go tonight.